The best thing is, is that you are the only person that hears me go. (laughs) (laughs) It's only done for the editing process so I can look at it and know like, okay, this is the part where I actually put the legit gunshot. But everyone, (laughs) nobody actually hears me say. What Shonen Archive, I'm glad you asked, Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated our entire well-beings to watching every single Shonen Jump anime that is available to us in English, starting with Gintama being the main series and the one we'll never forget about, Koriko, <laughs> on the side as well. <laughs> he's there. We, we know he's there. Never forget. Absolutely never forget. But we are going through Gintama and... But today we're going to be going through the last, <laughs> the last five episodes of Gintama seriously because if you don't remember, Gintama changed its name from Gintama to Gintama Kama, the little like comma thing on top. And after this, it is no longer called Gintama Kama. So it is technically the end of this. <laughs> it is technically the end of Gintama, um, and it's going to be episodes as I look through it. Episodes 248 to 252. So we're going to start off with episode 248, which is titled uh, Mao Dog Maudinaire. I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. It's it, it's uh, supposed to be like Slum Dog Millionaire, but Madao, Madao Dog Maudinaire. I'm going to go with that. Go ahead, Zen. Tell us what's going on in this one. So it's like a game show episode where Hasegawa is on a like a Who Wants to Be a Millionaire-esque show, uh, and he's trying to... He, he views the show as like his last chance to save his life, because he always does that shit. Um, and he keeps like getting questions and then having these weird like flashbacks to why he knows the answer to the questions. So he'll do stuff like, they'll ask him a question, and he'll be like, oh, why, why, why do I know that? And then he has like a memory where it's him in school, and he's like, oh, wait, that's right. And it's like, oh, this cute girl is giving me the answer, but then it's it's actually because he was there outside trying to hang himself, <laughs> uh, and it's like it's like all of them are like that. Um, <laughs> that was my favorite one, but all of them are like that. Yep. Um, and then he's like, he, his resolve keeps weakening because he's like, you know how Slumdog Millionaire is like a weird like it, it goes between he's doing the who wants to be a millionaire thing. And then it's cutting to, like, his life, which is basically just a clip yeah. show of, like, the worst things that's ever happened to a human being just in sequence. Yes, but, um, for, for, but, that, but those things in life are what give him the answers to, <laughs> yeah. to everything. <laughs> yeah, <else. laughs> that's what they're doing here. Um, and so he keeps having, like, horrible things. And at one point, the the funniest part of this episode for me was when he, he like, falls over and he's hurt. And they're like, quick, get him to the infirmary. And he grabs the woman's hand and he goes... Give me the last question. <laughs> and and his only wound is he's like bleeding a little bit from the mouth, but they're acting like he's dying. Yep. Um, and so uh, they throw him this question that they're like, oh, this, there's no way he's going to be able to answer this question. And he uses a lifeline and he calls this little girl and he's like, he, he like gives. He says something sweet to her that also is the correct answer to the question. But then they're like, "Yeah, the the prize didn't cover all your debt," and that's how it ends with him like back where he started. Yeah, that that is exactly how it goes. Uh, how'd you feel about this one, Zen? It was funny. It was stupid. It was one of those ones where I was like, "All right, this is not. This is clearly not going anywhere." Um, but it was it was funny. I, I think it ended the, up being like the, the right reveal right. that he's outside hanging himself it's really <laughs> fucking funny it is um so for this one i i started this one off a little bit weird because i was like oh man it's based off a of slumdog millionaire it is this is maybe the most <laughs> of the era which is funny because slumdog uh if you do not know oscar winning best picture of 2008 slumdog millionaire uh this entire episode is based on that 
And this came out four years after Slumdog Millionaire came out. Yeah. <laughs> um, so at the beginning, I thought I was like, oh, is this going to be like looking through his life and going through that and seeing Hasegawa's life and going like that? But then when they do the whole bit of like the reason that he saw it was because he was hanging and it actually kind of goes like, oh, wait, no, it's not an exact one to one. It's still doing a parody of it, but it's actually making fun of some of the stuff he's doing. He's like, how did I remember that? And the answer was, is because it's not actually his childhood. <laughs> He, he was he was seeing it for that, which is pretty funny. Um, I did like all the stuff with the little girl as she was also homeless, and like the and it's it's very similar to Slumdog in that it's very like emotional as all this bad stuff happens to him as like the mom gets a disease and the little girl gets a disease and he's like hanging out with him and she calls him dad and he's like super happy and then when he decides to be like I'm gonna win this for her and when they ask him the question he actually does that famous thing that they did on uh, who wants to be a millionaire which is the first person to ever won uh who wants to be a millionaire called up his dad and said I'm about to be a millionaire and then he answered the question. He used his lifeline not uh, for help with the question, but to tell him, I just won a million dollars. Which is honestly really good. So it was nice seeing that. And yeah, I ended up, uh, I, it was just like a good old time. I really do like Hasegawa. <laughs> Hasegawa's just funny. Yeah, it's hard to hate Hasegawa. He's just a silly guy. He is. He. I've, he's a silly guy. He's old. He's useless. Like, everything never, nothing ever turns out right for him, but he still wants to, deep down, be, like, a good guy. And I like that he has that kind of, like, uh, pathos to him. He's, like, so, trying. Yeah. Yeah, he's trying. He always, though, wants, he always wants to try his best. He does, and it makes it so a lot of it. And I also like the, the way that the other characters that actually know him um, are used in this, because they're all, like, watching the TV show. And they're not, like, actually talking any shit about him. Which is funny because usually anytime he's on screen, they never stop dumping on him. But this yeah, might they be, just shit on him constantly. Yes. This might be the first episode where they don't do that, and they're just like actually hoping he wins it, <laughs> and he wins it all, which was nice. But yeah, I, I liked it when it was like getting all emotional, and he won the ten million. I was like, man, this is very nice. Now where's the part where you fuck him over? And then they said like, man, that's great. Now where's the other ten million? <laughs> Yeah, where's the other half? <laughs> that was really good. So, yeah, I really liked it. And I, knew, I, I really didn't expect it because, uh, for some reason, I have a weird thing against Slumdog Millionaire. Do you yeah, remember... I, that's actually the only movie I've ever walked out of. It is, yeah, I, I can't explain it to you. Slum, I don't know how Slumdog won 2008. I, I, I was so bored the whole time, and I guess that's, like, shitty to say. I don't know. Because uh, I, I think it's, like, based on some dude's real-life story, so I guess, you know. It is. That I sucks. don't want to... Yeah. I don't want to... Yeah, no, nothing against that guy, but it is not Yeah, really... it was, it's not a good movie. It was a boring, really boring movie. I did not enjoy myself. Yeah. To the, to the point where I actually went back and be like, what the hell was fighting against Slumdog? And the answer is, okay, it won because these other movies... It was, like, fighting against Curious Case of Benjamin Button, Frost Nixon, Milk, and The Reader. I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> in, in that case, if that's what you're going against, give it to Slumdog. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, uh, I just had, like, it, it was just, it was one of those movies where it felt like they were like, oh, Misery is a good story. And I was like, not really. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kind of you know over it. You know what was sick in 2008? The Dark Knight, that's right. <laughs> Dark Knight re <laughs> released, baby. And it, it uh, swept the nation as everyone was going, holy shit, have you seen that new Batman movie? <laughs> so good. That's probably why I'm, I'm so angry, because I was like, man, it should have been Dark Knight up there. This <laughs> It could have easily have swept in there. Of, those, of 2008 movies, that's the one that I would constantly go to. That's enough talking about Slumdog. <laughs> <laughs> I needed to get it off yeah. my chest, <laughs> but That's, I respect that. Yeah. Oh man, it won eight Oscars. That, okay, you know what? Moving on. Episode two hundred forty-nine. <laughs> Presents are meant to be given early. Uh, uh oh wait, where did my thingy go? There it is. So this is um the start of what I I don't know if it's oh no it's not this the next one. So this one, they're doing a Christmas episode. Well, actually, no, it is kind of the start of this. So it's like a Christmas episode, sort of. And they keep commenting about how, like, why are we having a Christmas episode? Because, it, like, last time we did a, a holiday episode, it was, like, in March. And now we had New Year's in April. Like, why are we doing this right now? Mm -hmm. 
but they they end up meeting up with Getomaru, the old demon from one of the other arcs way back when. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I like every time Gintama does this, where a character that has not been in the show for a really long time is like, hey, it's been a really long time. <laughs> I don't know why. It's always funny to me when they do that. Oh, I, I, re- yeah, she- I, I really like the gag where they said, um, the, the end credits of the previous episode has made mention that Shinpachi and Kagura have not said a word since the Chogath <laughs> note episode. Yeah. <laughs> They just have they just have like barely appeared in it, haven't said a word until this episode. Uh and so then like they're uh they're, like watching TV and Getamar busts out of the TV and she like hits Gintoki Gento- Gento- with uh her club thing and like we need to uh go get a Christmas present for Anna, the the lady that Gintoki likes that's a secretly like a mystic person. Mm-hmm. Um Oh, and actually, this is the one that begins with the the bit where they're doing live action Gintama, and I think it's just um, Shinpachi's, glasses. Shinpachi's glasses on string, right? Yeah, that's right. Live action Shim- yeah. Shinpachi right here. <laughs> and it's just a bunch of string holding up a pair of glasses. Dude, the, uh, the way that they just don't care about keeping the glasses on straight, they're just like yeah. waving it around is so funny. <laughs> it's super funny. Um, so... They decide they're going to go get a Christmas present. They're going to help get a Christmas present. Uh, but they don't end up going to a Santa party. They go to a Satan party. And there's, like, demons everywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, and all of the all of the presents are, like, awful demon presents. Like, Gintoki's like, why don't we get her this toilet that's got, like, a bidet on it? And he's like, actually, that's a demon acid mouth. <laughs> but also, again... Another time where they randomly let the person cuss and it's just in the subtitles. Yeah, where he goes like "fuck," right? Well, because he goes, he's got. They're looking at the toilets and they're like, "Yeah, this is an acid toilet. It'll get rid of any fucking shit." <laughs> and they just say "fucking shit" in English, and then the subtitles aren't censored either. It just says "fucking shit" on them. Yeah, it's really great. Um, it's funny. Like they just randomly start cussing. Um, and they end up deciding, like, why don't you just pick out something? Because they keep going through and they can't find anything. And Getamaru keeps, like, KOing demons every time they try to give him a present. She's always like, can I test that present? And then she just, like, kills the guy holding it. Uh, and so they, they find, like, this little ring of, like, skulls. And she's like, would you, or Kintoki's like, would you like that present if someone gave it to you? And she said, well, I would like any present if, if, what's her name? Anna gave it to me. And Gintoki's like, exactly. So any anything that you know you get for her, she'll like. And so she's like, oh, okay. But then someone's like, I'm not actually going to sell you anything because these aren't demons. These are humans. We should kill them. And they run up to kill them. And then Gedimaru kills all the demons. And then they're like, oh, shit. Everybody go get Satan. And then is like, thanks, guys. Uh, I really appreciate this. I, I was the one who got an amazing gift today. And she leaves. But she just leaves them in the Satan party, and then Satan shows up. <laughs> and then it hard cuts to um, the lady, the, the weather lady giving a weather report. It's like, make sure you dress warmly, but all she's wearing is a shirt that says kill me on it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really funny. And then it shows that uh, the Odd Jobs crew is also wearing the kill me shirt, and then so is Getamaru. So they're all wearing matching shirts that just say kill me on them. <laughs> Oh man, I would wear the shit out of this shirt. That is I a, would wear it too. It's a that, great that shirt. It's a great shirt. When I saw that it's shirt, it's an like, amazing oh. shirt. I was like, Shun and Jump, you're fucking cowards because I know there's no legal way for me to buy this shirt. There's no way you would actually print a shirt that said kill me on it with a skull. It, yeah, it's just a skull, and then underneath it, it says kill, kill me, me in bold letters. Yeah. It's so funny. Really good. Um. And yeah, and then and then there's a little bit more, as it ends with uh, Shimpachi freaking out because earlier on, oh, that's right, the pandemonium. Song. Yeah, the, the the pandemonium came. But I don't know how she survived being eaten from the last episode. Well, no, I think the I think the joke is that anyone that he sees is is her. All right, fair because enough. when everyone else sees the pandemonium, it doesn't have her face on it. It's only when Shimpachi <laughs> yes. looks at it. All right, fair enough. 
But yeah, the it gets eaten in front of him, and then he's still freaking out because he's really sad because he really did love the. Well, what happens to begin with is they're walking down the street, and Shimpachi bumps into a stall, and he's like, "Oh my god! Oh no! My lips touch someone else's <laughs> lips!" And he looks up, and it's like a bunch of hanging pandemoniums that someone's selling, and he's like, "Oh my god! Pandemonium, son!" You're and mad. it's like showing the girl's face. And everyone, like to everyone else, they just look like those awful bug things. Um, and he runs over to to kiss it, and then get him. I was like, "Yeah, I'll take one. I'm hungry." And she eats it in front of him. <laughs> she eats it. She kills it, and then she goes like, "Oh, are you hungry? Don't worry, I'll get it." And then she buys it and eats it in front of him. And then he goes like, "I can't believe she actually just ate it in front of me." <laughs> and, and then I think Kagura eats one and then throws it up. Yes. Uh, she does. And then at the end, when he's still freaking out about her, they say, like, hey, don't worry, you can move on. And they do the whole line of pandemoniums, but now they're all different girl faces on them. Yeah, they, I I didn't know if this was a reference to the episode with the the wives. The game with the fake wives. Uh-huh. Because they kind of looked like that, and I don't know if that was a reference to that or not, but it was funny. It could have been, but either way, it was really good because when they show the how they look outwards and all the kids that were in the park just leave, <laughs> screaming because of all these fucking pandemonians, and he's just like, oh, yeah, that's right. And I'm like, oh, my God, poor Shinpachi. <laughs> feel so bad about him. Uh, I really like this episode. I really like Christmas episodes in general. <laughs> And I like anything that explores the Christmas season. So I really like this one because uh, it actually does have, like, a Christmas message. I like the idea of, like, because um, she talks about, like, oh, these aren't actual, like, Japanese demons. These are foreigner demons. And the idea that, like, foreigner demons would be, like, the mummies and Satan. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> they're, like, Wolfman and stuff. Yeah, I was like, oh, that's such a good-ass idea. <laughs> So I really like the way they displayed them there. Um, the joke of there's a I I really assumed that. So when she's going to the bidet thing and they show it, it goes like, "Oh my god, it's gonna clean their ass." And then he says, "It doesn't only do that." And then it shows it moving <laughs> slightly yeah. forward, and I was like, "Holy <laughs> shit! There's no way they can." Yeah, it moves slightly forward and does it. And then I think Shimpachi goes, that won't even hit anything. And I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, the, <laughs> the implications here are strong. And then there's a follow-up after what he says. And I was like, oh my god, that's crazy. <laughs> crazy thing to say. But it was a, a really good joke on that one. And like you said, when that <laughs> werewolf randomly said, fucking. <laughs> yeah, fucking shit. It was really good. That and when they talked about uh, the girl, goes like, oh yeah, this is going to be perfect for her ass. He was like, this is going to blow that shit straight out of her. <laughs> Which is really funny. Um, yeah, and then at one point, doesn't Shipachi go, why do you all think she has a dirty ass? <laughs> yeah, she he does. Why do you think her <laughs> ass is so dirty? Uh, her randomly just killing all the demons was also really good when she's like, oh yeah, let me try that. And then there was another project that was like, this is perfect for any demon, uh, demoness on her time of the month. She's like, all right, let me try that. And she just kills him. She goes like, nah, it didn't work. He goes like, you didn't even try it. <laughs> Whatever you, <laughs> you just killed him. That was really good. Obviously, the Kill Me shirt was nice. There's actually a reference to... Um, I've mentioned this before, but Getamaru shares the same VA as Saber from the Fate series. And when uh, she appears first off and punches Gintoki through the TV, he actually does say, Saber! Yeah, he yells... Uh, that's why he yells that. Okay. Yeah, that's why he yells Saber. Yeah, he yells Saber. She sounds exactly the same. To the point of, like, uh, Getamaru, I did not say, oh my god, it's Getamaru. I said, holy shit, it's Saber, because that's all I hear when I see that <laughs> voice. Uh, and yeah, it was. A, I really like this. How do you feel, Zen? Uh, it was good. Great episode. I like spooky-themed stuff. That's that's why I like doing the Halloween videos with you, where we just it, look at silly things. It's true. Um, and we're getting close spooky to Spooky theme stuff is, like, my favorite thing in the world. So this was really good. I enjoyed this a lot. Yeah, it is. It was a fantastic. Really, uh, really interesting idea here they got here about the different foreigner demons in Japanese. And they should come back to that. That's all I'm saying. I'd watch a show about that. Anyway, next episode. 
episode 250, which is going to start what I like to call an arc of episodes called This Show is Ending in Three Episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this episode is called New Year's Envelopes Are Perfect for Dirty Jokes. Go ahead, Zen. So, uh, they are trying to hand out New Year's Envelopes because we're continuing with the bit that they're doing New Year's episodes and it's fucking March. Because if you look at the air date of the episode, it's March. Uh, and so they're like, okay, well, we have to give out New Year's envelopes, which I guess is a thing that you do for children in Japan. You just give kids a, an envelope of money on New Year's, I guess. Yes, that, um, that's something they do. Yeah, that's, that's, see, I don't know if that is, but it seems like it's a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so Kagura wants one, and Gintoki's like, oh, yeah, you can't, you can't just get that. Um, and so he, he starts throwing out blood, and he, like, throws up his testicles, and he's like, oh. This is what happens when you get a, when you ask for a New Year's envelope from an adult. Uh, <laughs> you have to collect the, the treasure balls, and it does the Dragon Ball logo, even with like the cartoon Shenron on it. But it says treasure <laughs> balls instead the, of Dragon Balls. This fucking <laughs> shitty Shenron that they draw is so yeah, amazing. It's like an MS Paint awful looking Shenron. It's really uh, good. I love it. Oh. And then the word treasure is like scrawled in like shitty handwriting over top of the ball from yeah. Dragon Ball. Ball, and then instead uh, of there's like a little word after it too, like a the, uh, that might be ball. It might be what is the S. I don't know, but they, it's something that reminds me of where you would place the Z if there was a Z on it. Yeah, I think it's the S. <laughs> I think it's the S for balls. Yeah, because it's the treasure balls. Could be. <laughs> And she's like, you gotta go get seven of these treasure balls. And eventually she's like, are you fucking, I'm not doing that, you asshole. I just want a letter. <laughs> um, and then he's like, oh, I don't have any money. I can't give you one because I've used it all gambling. Um, and then Shinpachi arrives and he's like, oh, I got a letter, etc." And he's like, all right, we have to go start handing out New Year's letters because you're a fucking adult. So they start doing it. Um, and they see... The robot maid, and I think Catherine. And Catherine is pretending to be some sort of other character, and I don't know who it is. I think she's trying to Um, pretend to be a child. Well, she is, but then she says it's a specific name. Tomoe Hanami from Chibi Maruku-chan is what I'm seeing here. Because, Because Gintoki notices and kicks her, and then he goes... Shinpachi looks more like that character when he's cross dressing, and Shinpachi goes, Oh my god, you're right. This is correct. I, after after looking yeah. what she's supposed to look like, that is an accurate statement. Is it she's in cross dressing Shapashi? Okay, a, a little bit, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and eventually they're they're like, okay, they go to the Yoshiwara and they go to the little boy from the Yoshiwara arc, and he's like, you're the only child that I know, so I have to give you a fucking envelope, and um, he can't figure it out, and or he's like trying to, and they realize they don't have any. They didn't have any money. The, so the, the, the problem um, is, is that they want to give him gold. Yeah, he doesn't have any. And he's like, well, obviously I don't have any. And so Sokoyo is like, here, just borrow the gold and from me, and then you can have it. And he's like, well, I can't pay you back for lending me gold. And he's like, let her just take it and like, hand it to him. It's fine. It's not a big deal. And they're like arguing under their breath, but they keep getting louder to the point that like, uh, it won't, like they're doing the thing with like, <laughs> and then they're like talking. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then she starts yelling, and the audio for her yelling is louder than the audio for the coughing that she's supposed to be, like, covering up her words with. Mm-hmm. And so Kitoki at one point is like, you're drowning out your coughs with your screaming. <laughs> uh, and eventually he's like, fine, I'll take the gold. But he's, like, trying to grab it without looking, and he grabs her butt instead. And she hits him with the gold, and it shatters, and he ends up throwing up his testicles for real. <laughs> and they do a zoom in of his face like, covered in blood, and he's like, okay, there's your New Year's envelope, and he, like, (laughs) collapses on the ground. And so he's like, all right, fine, forget it. And so they keep looking around for someone else, and then Katsura and Elizabeth are there, and Elizabeth is dressed like Takasuji, (laughs) and (laughs) she's got a sign that says, like, Gintoki Senpai, and she, like, attacks him with it. And then she's like, of course... You will, in fact, give me a New Year's envelope because that is what makes you Gintoki Senpai. <laughs> and uh, he refuses. And then Shinpachi's like, oh, I have ones for uh, Kagura and Shinpachi. Here you go. 
And he's like, yeah, one of them, this is maybe one of my favorite bits in the whole series, is he goes, one of them is for the 5,000 yen Patriot course. It'll turn you into a Patriot in three days. The other one is for the 10,000 yen course, which is exactly the same, except you also get 5,000 yen at the end. <laughs> <laughs> fucking killed me. Um... <laughs> uh, Eventually, they, they move on from them, and then um, Kubei is like, Kentucky, I hear you're handing out balls today. <laughs> <laughs> and she's there for the balls, which she cannot get, um, obviously. And then they end up walking past Hasegawa, who's like begging on the ground, like, please, I need a New Year's envelope. And they keep trying to go but they end up in like a time loop where every time like every few steps they walk past him again and then it shows Hasegawa's eyes are like a black void and he's like even though it's a new year all I can see is darkness <laughs> and then he's like here I have a present for you too and he has two different wings on his back and like the evil monster sounds that he's making are like yeah find out what happens when you take that wing off yeah, and he has, like, a trap for both wings, too. It was like, it doesn't matter which yeah, one you pick. Both of them are trapped, yeah. And then, um... Sachan is like, oh, I have an envelope for Gintoki, my envelope. And then Gintoki hits her, as he does. Um, but then he ends up having money stashed in his boot because he had money for them, but then lost it because he forgot it was in his boot. Uh, so he gives them the money. And then they're like, yay, let's go out and have some, let's have a party together. But then it turns out there was no money in those at all. It was like a... I think Shimpachi's was for a glasses cleaning, and I don't remember what Kagura's was. A massage. That's what it was. I remember because I had uh, to look back because I was like, what did? What would he give her? <laughs> yeah. And it's funny because the shot of him running away from them as they're looking at the things they got is really fucking funny. <laughs> when he's in the background doing this extremely exaggerated run. Yep. Really, uh, and really then they good. blow him up. I think I think Kagura shoots him with her umbrella gun, and uh, Shimpachi gets a rocket launcher somehow. The one of the um, Shinsengumi okay. ones. Yeah, the Okita's one. Yeah, <laughs> shows up and, hits and, him uh, and blows him up. I also think this is the, the. I don't remember the last time Kagura used her umbrella as a machine gun, but she uses it's it. It's been again. ages. She uses it. I know she does it in Benny Zakura. Um, For sure. It's usually but during it's been a ages since then. It's usually during a serious arc in where she needs to fight a lot of people. She starts using it that way, but in terms of gag ways, they usually they usually don't use it for that anymore. So it was the return of uh, the gun gag. Uh, how'd you feel about this episode, Zen? Uh, it was good. It was pretty funny. It wasn't as good as the last one. Mm -hmm. um, I think the last one was kind of the peak for me. Actually, the next one was pretty good too. But yeah. this one was like, all right. I, I, I would say that's that's true. I, I did make mention that I feel like these last three episodes are definitely the ones where it's like, um, it's very clear that the show is ending pretty soon, so they just need to come up with something. <laughs> and this one, it makes the most sense. Even them making fun of the fact that it was like, hey man, we're not even in the right season to be doing this. <laughs> and they're doing it anyway, because it makes sense. They probably had the idea of doing it and they're just going to do it right here. That bit of Elizabeth showing up as Takasuji. I want to say when she when she shows up as Takasuji, they play his theme again, which is like yeah, they do. <laughs> which is like my favorite bit of anything. Whatever they show Takasuji is that they always play that song, even when it's not him. Uh, and also the signs that she puts up the 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 senpai one is really funny. And then there's another one where she puts up where it says "I simply destroy." It's just like his quotes in the yeah. little... also. Her her signs as Takasuji are uh, screaming manga bubbles instead of just the square signs like they normally are. Yes, yes, and that's really cool. They're like jagged manga panels from someone yelling. Really good, really funny, and also, um, oh man, what what is the bit here? I think there is. I know I'm thinking of the next episode. The 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 there was a bit about them complaining about Takatsuji, but that is in the next episode, not this one. But either way, that was a really good one. Um, them visiting. I have to make mention of it again because I think it's only fair. The freak shows up and does freak things once again when he says, uh, you shouldn't take in Toki's balls. You should be taking my balls. And then he immediately. Oh gets yeah. Story. The freak, the yeah. freak shows up. I only like bringing it up because I, <laughs> it's his only time. I really hate that guy. <laughs> and I like freaking up him being a freak and then calling him a freak that we have forgotten his name. 
Yeah, oh, I have no idea what his name is. Because they don't say it anymore. They don't say Because you don't need to. His only job is to show up and be a freak. He just shows up and is, acts a little freaky. And I'll say that in a, in a show where Shimpanchi is down with the pandemoniums as girlfriends, this guy still is able to be the biggest still freak. so in much worse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so By a mile. Worse. I also did Kondo like, is nude every third episode, and this guy is so much worse. Kondo was doing like weird backflips on stuff, and he still gets out freaked in the final episode. Yeah, the, want... well, the, the the episode where it, the last serious arc where they're like, "Oh no, we're running away from all of the different cops, and they keep finding us." And the way that Kondo finds them is that he's a gorilla humping a pole. <laughs> is still not as bad as this guy. It it is it is insane. It is a it is. A... <laughs> It is a tour de force. It's a tour de freak force. Is what it is. <laughs> tour de freak. I've never seen such a freak, and I just have to bring it up. Hate this week. guy. He's the worst, <laughs> man. Uh, yeah, it's 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 actually kind of amazing because I think it's his bits are the ones that fall apart the most, but are the ones I like bringing up the most just to bring up that he's a freak. Yeah, because like, yeah, they, literally, he's like the worst character. But he's funny to talk about because every time he shows up, he is consistently the worst character. It, yeah, it is kind of amazing. Um, the I also did like when Cube was like, "Hey man, you're giving out balls. If I can get those balls and then like wait a year for the shaft, that would be amazing. I could go get my surgery." He's like, "I'm not giving that away." <laughs> just I, I understand what you're going for, but I just I'm not giving that. No way. Um, I like the bit when they show up with the. With the gold, uh, the, with the, the, my bad, no, I was going to say penis, it's not a penis, it's a neon uh, Armstrong jet cannon. <laughs> yeah, the, the Armstrong cannon, yeah, the with the gold. mega Armstrong, Armstrong mega cannon, or whatever the hell it's called. Yeah, it, it, it sh- they show up with it all in gold, and the second that they see that he's offering them gold, Gintoki is like, mmm, I feel really bad, there's nothing I can give them, all I have are like my balls. And, like, I can maybe paint them silver. And then Shimpachi's like, don't paint your ball. They're, they're, they're like, saggy, and I can paint them silver. And then and <laughs> Shimpachi says, don't paint them silver. And then Kaka says, don't make them sag. And then he goes, like, I don't... <laughs> He's like, I don't think I have control over that. And he said it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Which is really funny. Um, the bit, Also, the bit where they're just... I, I don't know why they do it, why they did it. But when he says, like, hey, I have an envelope for you, for some reason, they want to shut down all of Yoshiwara. <laughs> for some reason. Yeah, like, they're like, oh my god, prepare for orbital bombardment. And he's like, no, <laughs> stop what you're doing. Stop being weird. And then he finally gives it to him. Uh, I also like when they're Was doing... Was the joke just that the sky is falling because Gintoki's doing something nice? It might be. <laughs> that might honestly be the reason why. Because he gets like... mad. He's, he's like, what are you expecting to happen? Like, he gets offended. Like, they're doing it at his expense. Yeah. So I, that's my only guess is that they're like, oh my god, the sky is falling because Gintoki's doing a nice thing for somebody. Oh, it might be that exactly, which is really f- funny that they think that little of him. <laughs> Uh, and also during the coughing bit when they're doing the whole like Haha, and they're like yelling is overdoing the the coughing. I like it when they show back to the kid. Seta is like a uh, coughing as well to pretend. He's like he's pretending not to notice that you're <laughs> <laughs> what you're doing. He's such a good kid. And yeah, and it's also very funny is that the second that she brought out that gold bar, I was like, this is gonna end with him touching her ass. I already know it. And now I'm just waiting for the build up to it. <laughs> Uh huh. Waiting for the payoff. Yeah, yeah, waiting for the payoff. And I was like, "There it is." When he says, "Yeah, that feels like a nice brown ball here," then he gets immediately smacked. I was like, "Perfect. <laughs> Thank you for giving me what I was looking for." And get uh-huh. someone. And yeah, and uh, that beginning bit with live action Shimpachi, I also really liked because at one bit, at one point, they show a gate, and I was like, "I think that isn't that fucking Kabukicho." And I said, "The only reason I know that is because uh, Kabukicho is based off of Kamurocho from the Yakuza series." <laughs> <laughs> and the, the gates look exactly the same, except for the name is different. That's the only thing. They changed it so that it's not the exact place. That's uh, pretty funny. It is. So, yep. Yeah. Nice episode. Um, let's go on to the next one. As we go to episode 251. When sleeping under a kotatsu, make sure you don't burn your balls. So, I like how we go right into balls again. For the next of, episode, there's a, a, lot, lot, of balls, a lot of balls right at the end. Yeah. Um, Is there any ball yeah, stuff in out. the next episode? Uh, n- uh, sort of. More because that's the one where they're just like 
we're sorry, like over and over again. <laughs> he apologizes uh, for all the the, the yeah. shitty things that they've done <laughs> throughout mm-hmm. all two hundred and fifty two episodes of Gintama. <laughs> Uh, so they're, they're under the Kotatsu, and then Gintoki's like, hey, uh, you ever think that humanity evolved from Kotatsus? Which, by the way, Kotatsus look awesome. There's, like, warm tables. Dude, I wish we had something like this. I know, this man. Episode, I was like, man, this, this kind of seems sick. I, yeah, this <laughs> looks fucking rad. <laughs> like, this looks amazing. It does. Uh, so eventually he goes and gets a new, um... Kotatsu, but then it turns out there's like a black hole underneath it, and anyone who goes underneath it is uh, sucked in, and they lose all their motivation, and they become old men. And it happens to like the whole cast, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, one after the other, it keeps happening. Even Katsura does it, and he goes, my name is not Katsura, it's Zura. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're all wearing wigs as they go bald. And it's also uh, all of them giving up. And that's the ultimate yeah. give up from him. Yeah. Uh, and so they're all like underneath the uh, Kotatsu, and then um, eventually it, it it breaks and like falls through the floor, um, and everyone is back to normal. And then um, Shinpachi is shown to now be bald and unmotivated, and he's like, "I'm too lazy to say anything about this," and they all just go, "Sorry." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's that's really all this episode is in a nutshell. <laughs> How'd you like this one, Zen? Uh, it was okay. It was pretty funny. Um, I thought the the joke was uh, every time someone showed up and got like demotivated, I thought it was pretty funny. My favorite one is when Ote shows up and she even grows a mustache <laughs> to become an old man. And then Kyube runs in and goes, oh my god, man and woman, we can finally be together. And then Kyube is also under the Kotatsu, so she also becomes an old man, and she's like, ah, damn it. <laughs> but I think it's really funny, because the implication is that gay, like, a gay couple is not allowed, but as long as one of them is a man, it's okay, <laughs> no matter who it is. Yeah, that was, a, <laughs> that was definitely a funny moment of them going like, damn, so close. <laughs> yeah, so- I think she goes like, ah, damn it, I messed up, because she also goes underneath. She's so close to the answer of what she actually needs. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the 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 gags of them going underneath, like the because um, a lot of characters show up for this, but there there's one bit where um, he's hanging out with Katsura uh, when Katsura shows up and he just accepts the Zura and they start talking about like, ah oh, man, the other two guys are they're so lucky, like Sakamoto's such a success and. Takatsuji. Yeah, that when they're bitching about Takatsuji. He's like, ah, oh, man, he's got that, like, family money. He's gonna be okay. Yeah, yeah. Gintoki at one point is like, Who, who's Takatsuji? I don't even know that guy. He never shows up. <laughs> he never shows up. I'm gonna talk bad about him online. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go online and talk bad about him. And then another funny bit is when Hasegawa shows up and he's already bald because he's already demotivated without the Kutatsu helping. <laughs> He does it. He's like, man, nope. I'm already... And everyone's like, hey, Azagawa. He's like, what the hell? Everyone was just waiting for him to show up. Yeah, I think they say you're late. And then Shimbachi's like, what, do all, do lazy old people have some way to communicate? <laughs> that they just know? Yeah. There's also the bit of, um... Uh... Kondo was already underneath it along with um uh, Sachan. Yeah, yeah they Sachan. were both underneath it. They were both already underneath it and then they're already revealed that they're also bald because like, you know what, we're yeah. giving up the stalking game. Yeah, I think they're like, I'm tired of being a stalker. I'm tired of being a stalker. You know what? Funny enough, now someone's coming after me. Then Shibachi's immediate reaction is like, Nobody wants you. <laughs> nobody. He says it to both of them. He's like, Sachan, nobody wants you. And then also, Kondo, nobody wants you. There's also a real funny bit at the beginning with Sachan, because at the beginning when they're talking about if Katatsu, if the man evolved from Katatsu, um, there's a bit where they show, like, the evolutionary chain, and they say at one point the thing that changes is the dominatrix and being with a man, uh, like, being in that situation, a, a man and a woman. And Sachan comes out from underneath the the, um, the Katatsu that they currently have. She goes, like, finally, you have embraced my ways. <laughs> you're ready to go and go my side and then he immediately like fucking blasts her and then they go to um the, he goes to go trade in the katatsu and he's like hey what do you want for this he's like we're not into human trading because sachan is still a part of the katatsu <laughs> uh 
which is uh very good but yeah this it's a very like simple episode but it's uh some good bits in here where you go like oh yeah fine and then uh, it's also funny because this is apparently the the new episode for to start the year that's the way that they're treating it is like this is the new episode to start the year and we're not doing anything <laughs> Everyone's just in the katatsu and relaxing for the most part until it ends. I also like that underneath it there's a black hole, which is why they can't escape it at all. Is that it's like yeah, their like lower bodies are sucked into the black yeah. hole underneath. I was like, damn, I really do wish the katatsus were a thing here in America, but they're not. Yeah, they look awesome. They do. They look fucking rad, dude. Oh, fuck. Maybe one. Maybe at some point I just go to Japan during winter and then I get to experience a katatsu for myself. Because they always seem really awesome whenever I see them in anything. Like, there's an entire subplot in Persona 4 about getting a katatsu. And there's even... Which is really funny. Because when something happens to a character, they say, You know what would really cheer up? Getting a katatsu, man. <laughs> and <laughs> she loved that katatsu. <laughs> and then they go... Well, go I would too. They look fucking awesome. Yeah. They really do. They really do. And I think that's... Uh good enough to leave it from here because <laughs> now we're gonna go on to the final episode uh oh also this one ends in a preview for an upcoming arc that becomes important because they address it at the beginning of 252 because that is not in this episode <laughs> so episode 252 we're sorry go ahead son yeah so episode 252 begins with them in all white about to kill themselves. Uh, and they're like, this is it. This is the final episode. We've done all we can. This is it. Um, we are gonna apologize the only way we know how. And then they get up and they go to murder Shimpachi. And they're like, it's time to fucking pay for your crimes. <laughs> and he's like, why, why me? It's not just me. Uh, and then the Shin Sengumi show up. Um, and they go to scapegoat Yamazaki and like kill yourself. Uh, and then Kondo's like, "No, I'll do it. I'll I'll bear myself to the world and apologize." And he strips, and they end up making him like clap his legs while he stands up on his arms, flashing the camera until eventually uh, Hijikata stops them from continuing. Um, and then they go to church, and they're like, "We have to apologize to God." Uh, and then the church is uh, Prince Hada. <laughs> And, like, his little assistant guy. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> he's, he's like, all right, confess. And then Kagura's like, I'm sorry. I, I'm supposed to be the cute heroine, but all I do is throw up all the time. And then they have, like, this long dialogue. And then Kentucky's like, listen, we've improved as people, all right? Watch us be better people. And then he starts vomiting, but it makes bird tweeting sounds instead of actually vomiting. And they're like, yeah, we can cover it up with other sound effects. And they all just start throwing up. Uh, and then Katsura also starts apologizing. And he's like, "Yeah, I was at the I was at Ote's club, and I was a huge asshole at the club." <laughs> um, and then they end up showing like a, a montage of every time they've said sorry in the series, which is like a shitload of times. It is a lot um, of times. It's a lot of times. And then uh, eventually, Kentucky's like, "Oh, what about this time?" And it's the fight with Jirocho, <laughs> where they both just go like. They're, like, fighting. And he's like, old man, kid, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're, like, they, they throw the pipe up in the air, and they go to the, the standoff at the end. And he's like, I'm going to keep my promise and survive. Yeah, I'll keep my promise, too. But first, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then they, they get pissed. Like, that did not fucking happen. Um, How dare and then you ruin the movie, you're like, it's so good. Yeah, and then the Shinsen Gumi are like, all right, let's just go fucking drinking. We're going to cut. And then it shows uh, the author, Sorachi, who uh, shits a letter out. And then uh, um, Kagura reads the letter, and it's like, the anime is ending, but it's not because of anything that we did or that you guys didn't support us well enough or anything like that. Um, it's because one of the producers shaved their head and can't, apol uh, can't apologize anymore. So they can't bring the show back until his hair grows back. So one day we'll return, but we're sorry that we can't stop making dirty jokes. And then it ends with them all like standing by the logo. And it just says, we're sorry for our love of dirty jokes. And then it ends. Yeah. With a montage from, with the, the first song of this season, 
which is the Tugunukio alien, the the theme from the beginning 200 episodes or so. Like, they go back to using that. Instead of doing the regular OP, it's the first uh, OP of the this new season that, that they did. Um, yeah, and that's the last episode for this one. Uh, how'd you feel about it, Zen? This is the final episode, once again. Uh, it was really stupid the whole time, but then the montage at the end... Where uh, they were showing all the clips of all the other episodes, I got a little emotional. I was like, if I actually had to wait six months instead of one week to watch the next episode, I'd probably be pretty. I'd be pretty sad. Yeah, and it it can't be stated enough that at this time, people really didn't know if Gintama was actually ending for sure or not. Like, every single time we run into one of these, people aren't sure if the anime is actually going to be coming back at some point. It really ends up being a uh, an interesting time. It sounds like pure mer- like I actually am glad that we're do we're watching it the way we are because now I know for a fact it's like man, I know that for next week there's more Gintama to watch. <laughs> but I can't imagine. Yeah, if, that- if I actually had to wait, I would be I would be pretty torn up. Yeah, I would definitely be like, damn man, that really sucks if that's the way it goes. But yeah, especially because the note that he says at the end actually feels kind of genuine in terms of what he's saying where he says like hey it's not really anyone's fault but this does have to happen and we're gonna have to go away for a bit it's like the most sincere they've ever been at the end of one of these episodes and he's like you know what if you want to blame it on something blame it on this and it even feels like it the way i know it feels sincere is that he's still putting in jokes like he's saying you know what it didn't have to do with the production staff. There was no issues. It didn't have to do with the fact that I can't eat fried chicken anymore. It didn't have to deal with our director's divorce. The fact that, you know, he had to leave his wife and now he's alone. And if you, anyone wants if anyone wants him, feel free to send marriage applications to him because he could really use a wife at this trying time. <laughs> Which is really uh, funny. Um... But yeah, it, ends, it, it is a weird feeling to definitely go through this without knowing that there's going to be more of something or not. Uh, but yeah, and then the episode itself, I actually ended up liking because a lot of the apologies that they were doing, I really liked when they did like Otai, when she's like, I'm sorry about um, bringing up about wanting to restore my father's dojo. I really regret ever bringing it up. <laughs> Because they never actually addressed it, and they've never addressed it in any of the episodes of the 250 plus of Gintama. They have never once actually gone and done it. Um, the freak shows up and says, I'm so sorry for freaking, but I just need to freak. Um, yeah, what does he say? I'm sorry that I can't get hard without kink. Yeah, he's like, he yeah, I'm sorry I can't get hard without getting kinky. I'm so sorry. Uh, there's a bit with Takasuji where he says, uh, the, they, which is really, I really find it funny how they show up because they pop up from underneath the water and they're on their like little fucking ship. And then they go like, Hey, Takatsuji, um, we don't get a lot of airtime and the show might actually legitimately be ending. Do you have anything that you want to say? Uh, yeah. Cause like, I understand that they have trouble using us cause we're like too violent. And you know, the last episode that we were in. The, the last arc that we were in got really violent. Um, so what do you have to say? He's like, I'm sorry that I want to destroy everything. And then it reveals that he's the, the, the fucking pervert monk that he's with him. And they're doing the same bit that they did when they were up in space. Where it's him and he's like, let me tell you a little bit more about like what kind of laws that I think shouldn't be allowed to hurt people. And then they immediately start like shooting and stabbing him as Takasuji continues like to breathe his little pipe. And then, the, and then their ship goes back underwater. <laughs> Yeah. That's my favorite part. It's the part was like, they're doing all this stupid bit, and then it goes, whoop, and it goes back underneath the water. <laughs> um, there's another bit when they're talking about killing a character. They say, like, everyone knows that at the final arc, you have to kill characters. Um, and they, they, they show a montage of Jinpachi as different characters who have died and then later came back. Um, I think one of them, he's Jotaro. Um... One of the dudes from, I want to say Featherman? I can't remember if it's actually called Featherman or not. I think it is. Is it? Okay. No, I'm thinking of, that's what the fucking Atlas calls him. They call him Gotcha Man. There you go. Science Ninja Team Gotcha Man. One of the characters from there, I believe. Um, 
He's ramen. He's also there as Ramen Mon. I think he's there as one of the characters from Rioni Kenshin. Maybe I don't know. It looked like a girl, and the hair ribbon reminded me of Rioni Kenshin. I actually don't know if it's from there. Um, uh, yeah, it looks like um, Kaoru. Oh, okay. Uh, and I like this bit because they showed Ramen Man, and it made me remember. It's like that's right. They do. Do you know? Okay, obviously you didn't see Kaneku Man. Do you want to know how Ramen Man died in Kaneku Man? How? Um, he got stabbed in the fucking head and then thrown into a coffin because they were having a coffin match. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and he survived. <laughs> they say he went into like a deep coma like Kaiba did in Yu-Gi-Oh! And <laughs> eventually Ramen Man recovered. Uh, he healed. He healed from getting stabbed in the fucking head. It was <laughs> it was insane. But I remember when I was reading it, I was like, God damn, this is a way to kill a character. Because they stab him in the head, and then they go, oh god. And then you forget that there's a coffin match, but he's still bleeding out the head. And then the dude just fucking chucks him in the coffin and closes it and says, that's <laughs> it. Robin Man has been defeated. <laughs> that's amazing. It is. Kinnika Man is great. Can't wait to get there eventually. Um... So yeah, it ended up being a, it's obviously a montage episode, so, and I actually really do like a lot of the montage episodes, because it reminds me of like, hey, it's weird to feel nostalgia for it, but even as we're walking through it, there is a feeling of like, oh man, I remember when we were watching that, I remember all this, this is just nice <laughs> to kind of go through again. Um, and then I also like the bit where they were, in the previous episode, they were showing a bit for the next arc, and it's, I think a blonde haired character and he's like talking and then they said like oh that's not happening sorry it's like if you actually look back at it and you see he doesn't talk and then he did like a close-up and you look at his le his his uh, lips flap and it says like it spells out i'm sorry yeah and they're like what the actual yeah, like no one would have seen that shit <laughs> nobody could have ever seen that shit at all um so yeah i thought it was a uh, i guess a good way of ending it and it actually is over the time. Oh, I also really like the bit when they're going to the church. Because for some reason, the church is not animated. It is like a little doll, like um, live action house. The, like, moral oral is what it reminded me of before <laughs> moral oral. That's amazing. It is. And then when, the, when everyone starts throwing up, they actually destroy it in, in real life as they, like, <laughs> make it move all the way to the side. Because of all the throw up. I can only assume that they did it because they didn't actually want to pay animators to cause a church to be destroyed by vomiting. I also like during the vomit bit when Shimpachi's vomiting, it's a song. And every time he keeps vomiting, the song restarts. <laughs> and it starts from yeah. the beginning. <laughs> really, uh, really good bit. Um... And yeah, I liked all the characters coming out saying apologies, doing the little thing. I think Sachan even comes out and says, like, I'm sorry, I've been here for the entire time, and I've been watching Gintoki basically jerk it, is what she says, except for it gets censored. <laughs> but she wants to make one final apology for it. So yeah, that is technically the end of Gintama for now. <laughs> Yeah, Gintama, Gintama went on a break. I actually thought uh, it was a joke for a while, because I forgot that you said that it was uh, actually an ending thing, and I was like, this is... Yep. This is they're really committing to this. Really and then the next episode the started playing and it was like October. Yes. Like, oh shit. The next episode doesn't start till October. Again, someone did give a full explanation of it that I'll have to go dig up and find, which I'll explain in the next episode. But just know that this episode came out on March 26, 2012, and the next episode doesn't start till October 4th, 2012. And then the next batch of episodes, which is now called Gintama Overtime or Gintama in Chosen, um, it goes up until episode 265, which is then the final episode of Gintama in Chosen. And um, then after that is a movie which is called... <laughs> Excuse me if you would get confused at this, because there are two movies that are technically the end of Gintama... <laughs> Uh, th which is what we're gonna end up seeing, uh, next, as soon as I fucking find it. Anime Movie 2. I forget the full name, because the full name is, like, really long. Gintama the Movie, the final chapter, um, Be Forever Yorozoya, which was supposed to be, if they could not come back for the anime, 
this was going to be considered the end of Gintama because it would have left things off on a good end. But then obviously Gintama came back. <laughs> so, to sum it up, let me tell you what's going to be happening for the, the hopefully the next, in theory, four, four episodes of Shonen Archive, if I can, if I, my numbering is correct. Um... Next week should be episodes 253 to 256, which is a four-episode arc called the Kintama arc, which is the arc that they were um, showing the ending bit on episode 251. And then after epi- after that is another arc called the Courtesan of a Nation arc, which is 257 to 261. And then it is another weird batch that we're going to have to do. It is another arc called the Beam Sword Style arc, which is episodes 262 to 264. And then we're going to be have to we're going to have to tackle on episode 265 because that is the last episode of Gintama in Chosen. And then after that, we will be watching the second Gintama movie, the Gintama, the last <laughs> the last chapter be forever. The final chapter be forever. Yorozoya. And then after that, we will come back with episode 266 of Gintama, which has another new name, which is a sequel to the previous Gintama uh, thing that happened. And then we will continue on from where we go forth, uh, from where we will go forward. And from that episode, we're going to be 103 episodes away from completing Gintama from that point forward. So... Crazy shit happening, Zen. <laughs> a lot yeah, of big big moves. Big moves for sure. A lot of uh, big moves. And when we get into the next season, is where we're also gonna have a lot of um. We're gonna have even more. <laughs> we're gonna have even more, is what I'll say for now. But yeah, that's what's gonna be looking for in terms of Gintama stuff and for in terms of Shonen Archive. But that's the end of this episode of Shonen Archive, everyone. As always, if you want to. Find more of us. You can find Jen, Jen. You can find Zen over on his channel where he does Shonen and Chill. Uh, where stuff is happening in Shonen Jump. Anything interesting happening in Shonen Jump, Zen? Uh, Kakarabachi he continues to slam. Yes. I Space for- Jam. Space Jam. I forgot to mention that <laughs> I'm now cut up to on Sakamoto Day, so now I, ha- I actually have no excuse to <laughs> hold back and actually watching um, Kakarabachi. It's about time. Yeah. Gotta yeah. get on peak. I gotta get on peak. We'll see by next week if I'll be able to get on it, because I still need to get through the Final Fantasy fourteen stuff that I need to go through and work is being a piece of shit. But I will likely be reading it pretty soon to catch up on the train as we all wait for more Shonen Jump stuff. I was saying this recently because someone was talking about, like, you know what? Crossovers are cool. I wish that they actually happened more modern day. And I realized, like, man, the last Shonen Jump crossover was Jump Force, wasn't it? Yes, I believe so. How unbelievably sad that is. Mm-hmm. How unbelievably sad that is. Especially because it's not even a good Jump crossover. Because they didn't even include all the characters in the history of Jump. No, it was like barely any. It was a, it was a lot of Dragon Ball, One Piece, uh, Yu Yu Hakusho, I think, and Hunter x Hunter. It was like the same four series. There was, of there was JoJo, Dragon Ball, Yu-Gi-Oh, um, Yu-Gi-Oh Naruto, City Bleach. Hunter, the one character from City Hunter. The one character from City Hey, I'm looking up the Jump Force cast now because I remember it being insane. It is an Not insane. in a good way. Not in a good way. Weird. No, Weird. No. Not in a good way. Uh, so there was one character from Black Clover. There That's were right. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven characters from Bleach. There was one character from Boruto. One character from City Hunter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven characters from Dragon Ball. One character from Dragon Quest Dies Great Adventure. Of course, die. Lucky. One character from Fist of the North Star. One, two, three, four, five, six characters from Hunter Hunter. Three characters from JoJo. Four characters from My Hero Academia. One, two, three, four, five, six characters from Naruto. One, two, three. Six, seven characters from One Piece, two characters from Rurouni Kenshin, two characters from Saint Seiya, two characters from Yu-Gi-Oh, and three characters from Yu Yu Hakusho. The game also featured Light Yagami and Ryuk, but they were not playable. 
playable characters. They were story characters only. And there were two more Bleach characters and two more Saint Seiya characters that were planned to be playable, but were scrapped when the game did not do well. Man, that game unfortunately started off bad the second they said you will not be controlling light. That, that and was... also that everyone looks like an action figure. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, there was also the fact that like you looked at Kurapika and you went, what the fuck did they do to Kurapika? <laughs> uh-huh, yeah, everyone looks bad. A lot, a lot of people look bad, and I, I think the ones that don't look bad are the Yu-Gi-Oh monsters, the ones that are supposed to be actually like when Kaiba summons blue eyes and stuff like that. That looks good. Yes, yeah, because because like they, I guess those are just meant to look like toys. But it's so weird to have your main cast look like toys. They don't look like. Why would you no. not make them look like anime characters in your anime video game? No, it's not. It's unfortunate and. Like I've said, I've said this, I think, countless times throughout the years, every time I bring it up. It was a really Actually, weird... Actually, I think the JoJo characters might look the best, because they're not, like, a traditional anime-looking style. Oh, really? That would be... That would make a lot of sense, sense then. But it, it was it was really weird. I understand why they go for the popular series to be in there, but the whole... Like, I'm gonna get a lot of shit for this. But the reason that Smash Brothers works is because they have Mr. Game and Watch in it. Along with the really uh, known characters that people know and love. You need those characters that are deep cuts. Otherwise, what's the fuck the point of doing a crossover special? Yeah, yeah. It feels weird to do a celebration of Shonen Jump and there's like... How many total series are there? There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 16 total series. Yeah, it... it like, it, like if, even if you look at the last Jump versus game, it, that you said there's 16 series in that. And the last time we had one, it was J-Star of Rick Victory versus. They had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. And then a little bit more if you count some of the supporting characters. No, actually, no. It, 24 different series. It had Assassination Classroom, Madoka Box, Be Belzebub, Naruto, Bleach, One Piece, Bobobo, Ch uh, Taro no Yuki no Nakami Tachi. That's how you know it's a deep cut because I cannot fucking <laughs> pronounce this at all. Yeah. <laughs> Reborn, Dr. Slump, Dragon Ball, Rioni Kenshin, Fist of the North Star, Saint Seiya. Sagakagi Otoka Koju, uh, Gintama, The Disastrous Life of Saki K, Hell Teacher Nube, uh, Lucky Man, uh, Hunter x Hunter, Toriko, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, Yu Yu Hakusho, and Kuchiro Katsuyo. It's like a really, another series that was only in Japan. And then if you wanted to count some of the weirder ones, technically speaking, Puyo Fuko, Jaguar, Nero, Nisekoi. They found the they fucking found a way to put the girl from Nisekoi into their fighter, but they could <laughs> Skit Dance was in that game. Two Lover was in that game. Ha fucking Haiku was in that game. Tet uh, Tetsuya from Kuroko's basketball. He made it into that game. And you're gonna tell me and apparently uh Shimpachi provides commentary it's to some of Gintoki's battle actions while he's fighting. And it's just it just feels so weird to do a celebration of anything and you don't celebrate the full thing. Yeah, like, I, I, why would you make a crossover game that's literally just like only the most popular series of like the past five years and that's it? And City Hunter, it's like that in City Hunter. Yeah, and City Hunter because it's super popular in specific regions. I know why we got Saint Seiya is because Mexico loves Saint Seiya and they released it during like a Mexico anime panel where they said like you know what i know that it's gonna be well received here here you go for the french city hunter for the mexicans here you go saint Seiya, and then it just doesn't come out right um it has to be all over the place because it's a shame because i really do like seeing characters from different jump properties interact with each other like the most of the thing that i remember most from that game is when uh the way that deku thinks that piccolo is a criminal for some reason yes he thinks he's a villain he does and he goes like wait 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 a minute and everyone was like damn i didn't know <laughs> this is your goat your racist goat unbelievable and i will i like to see shit like that <laughs> where it's actual like people interacting and doing cool stuff like that and it, oh man i want there to be a new one of these but i know for a fact that we will never have as games get more expensive, they will just never be able to justify the cost of having all these old-ass characters in it. 
Yeah. Because even in the DS with... Well, even, the, even like the mobile games, they don't do it anymore. Not really. I mean, that's unfortunately why War Collection died is because... One of the reasons is that they didn't get to... There was like next to no current day jump style shit in it. Like, it was great if you loved all the old stuff, which uh, we did. <laughs> but, they, like, they never even had a huge showing off of, like, for My Hero at the time. When My Hero was, like, popping at the time, um, they never had one of those for those. It was really weird. The game died without ever introducing a uh, jump-limited character from a modern series. <laughs> That's true. It's, it's kind of insane to think about. It's like, yeah, okay, that that's a little bit weird. It was a choice. Um, and a lot of the old DS games, they got away with it because it was all Japan. But now that they're coming over here, they have to appeal a little bit more. And I don't know. It just makes me sad. Real, real shame. If they ever did do a new one, I know for a fact that you're just going to have like nonstop people complain if it's someone that's like, if you can't have Lucky Man in your game nowadays, because you're going to have like 5,000 YouTube react videos going like, who the hell is this? More more like snooze fest. It's like, sh oh my god. This is why we can't have anything good. Because people only get monkey hype for the characters they know. <laughs> yeah, for like the character that came out last year. Yeah, and they're like, oh my god. And it's like, yeah, I can complain about this forever. But yeah, jump stuff. I want them to make a new jump game. <laughs> It'd be really nice if there was actually a legit one that could celebrate jump in some kind of fashion. Uh, even if it is just another shitty 3D arena fighter. Though really, they should just actually do a normal 2D one. I really hope that Hunter x Hunter game does good so they can show, like, actually people will buy non-battle arena style video games. <laughs> Please. Even if they look kind of weird and jank, which that game does look weird and jank, but, like, in a fun way. Anyway... If you want some more me stuff, you can go over to my channel, I guess. I do. <laughs> I do other things. I release other videos. The Vigo anniversary is popping up, so I'm releasing some more stuff related to Vigo things um, as we prepare for the anniversary because it's going to be a pretty big one. Seven Year was the best anniversary for Vigo because they offered like a thousand free currency for doing stuff. And it was so big that when they had the 8th anniversary in JP... People said, why isn't this better than the last year? <laughs> it was that good. And now they're going yeah. into the ninth year. So we'll see how they did tackle it on that. But for ours, it's a very hype time to be going forward right now. Um, and I'll remember to occasionally put up videos that are not related to that. I have some fighting game stuff. I put a Final Fantasy fourteen stuff up there. I got all, all the stuff in the Final Fantasy fourteen collab before it went. Not Final Fantasy fourteen collab. The Fall Guys collab before it went away. Me and some dudes sat down and, uh, uh, some random dudes sat down on, like, the, the last night of it and slammed out a bunch of wins in Fall Guys. Just me and a bunch Five of random Falls Guys. Yeah, as we all, all shared together. I'm starting to learn more into the, uh, into this community of people who are like, you know what? It's currently 6 a.m. and we're all here playing this weird janky Fall Guys thing hoping to not get... Hoping that the lag doesn't fuck us over and we make it to the second <laughs> round. We're all they here. They should just make that collab permanent. It's so good. It is. They should. But unfortunately, it's not. So it's gone for now. And so now I just have Yokai Watch. So I have to continue going through Heaven's War. <laughs> now that I've been distracted long enough, I can go back to doing stuff like that. But anyway... That's where you can feature f some more stuff for me. And now the show is ending. And as always, if you want to show more support for the show, you can always leave a like. Commenting and watching is enough. Um, because you don't have to worry about the show going away. Me and Zen will continue doing it um, until one of us dies. We're, we're, we're being serious about that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one of us will one day. Yes, and that's when the show will stop. Yeah, that's when the show will stop. Unless we can figure out a way to get our brains is like some kind of weird robot type of technology and you can continue on man what a dark future i just imagine one of us continuing on the show knowing that they're with their dead friends ai as they talk to each other <laughs> <laughs> terrifying hellscape that i've imagined for us but one of us is gonna have to experience it one day <laughs> and that's it for shot archive this week thank you very much for watching We'll hopefully be back next week unless my... And no, we'll be back next week because I'm going to ask for uh, an easier workload for Wednesday because I need to... Hell yeah. Do something. Priorities. 
Yes, it will be uh, my brother's birthday next week. So I'm going to be taking over some specific things that he does for work. And I'm going to say I'm going to be handling for today so he can enjoy his day uh, off. But anyway, thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Why don't you say goodbye, Zen? Goodbye, everybody.